Okay, welcome everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started here as others trickle in. Uh, first off, welcome to Baroque Tools' second installment of our Oak webinar series. We're excited to have Larry Miller, Baroque Tools' Vice President of Operations, here with us today. My name is Jason Halling. I'm the Manager of Business Development and Marketing at Broke Tool, and I will be moderating today's event. Uh, first off, I want to cover a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, at the very beginning of Larry's presentation, we'll be taking a brief polling question to gather your input regarding specific maintenance concerns. I would ask that you provide feedback. It's relatively timely. We're going to use some of that in the presentation. Secondly, for those that are logged in on your computers, you have the ability to submit written questions to Larry. Feel free to send in questions throughout his presentation. You don't have to wait until the end, and we'll do our best to have Larry cover as many questions as time permits once his uh, presentation's over. Also note that questions that get submitted and we might not cover in the, the Q&A session of the webinar, Larry has agreed to respond via email to each of you individually, so um, we've committed to respond to each of those. Thirdly, Larry's formal white paper is going to be available for download on, on Friday, June 27th, and that can be accessed via the same registration process that you've gone through today or in the last few weeks. And lastly, this webinar is being recorded and will also be available to all registered participants this Friday, and that will also be available via the same, um, via the same route that you got in today. All right, with the housekeeping items behind us, I'll go ahead and introduce Larry. As mentioned before, Larry is the Vice President of Operations for Baroque Tool Incorporated. He is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of our manufacturing and assembly departments. Larry received an associate's degree in tool and die technology from ITT Technical Institute and has over 20 years of experience in the HVAC market. Larry started his career at Baroque Tool in die design, designing and building dies for 11 years and later becoming our die room supervisor. Larry then transitioned to Sturgis Machine Company as general manager and then spent four years managing his own international consulting firm, serving the automotive and HVAC markets. Larry transitioned back to Baroque Tool in 2006 and we're glad to have him here with us today. Without further ado, I'll turn the time over to Larry. Thank you, Jason. The oak machines, like any complex equipment, require consistent maintenance to ensure ideal performance and high quality production. The proper implementation and care of equipment includes three central aspects. Planned infrastructure and environment, preventative maintenance, and the perishable tooling. Adherence to oak preventative maintenance suggestions and consistent keep upkeep of perishable tooling. At this time, we'd like to take a moment to get some feedback from you with the poll question. What is the biggest cause of machine downtime in your facility? Mechanical issues, air hydraulic issues, electrical or controller issues, material issues, or operator issues? We'll go ahead and give you about 60 seconds to go ahead and uh, put your responses in, and we'll come back. All right, we're going to go ahead and close the poll. Right now, it looks like it's 67% mechanical issues, 13% are electrical controller issues, and 20% attributed to material issues. Okay, that's good information to have. A durable, stable foundation is central to the proper functioning of oak machines. Oak machines are manufactured and assembled in an environment with a level, solid foundation and are therefore configured to operate under the same conditions. Placing a machine in a facility with a flawed foundation will cause premature wear of machine components and undesirable effects on production. Fin presses are particularly vulnerable to inadequate foundations. Presses produce constant vibration and must be placed on a foundation that is strong enough to support the weight and the force of a fin press during production. Despite the presence of vibration dampeners, a weak foundation cannot properly absorb the impact of a functioning fin press. This can cause the press to actually shift its floor position over time. Another foundation problem that can arise involves inadequate subsoil structure beneath the otherwise strong foundation, 
which due to significant floor impact generated by a pin press may lead to an uneven surface and will allow movement or misalignment of the press, which will shift the die alignment out of tolerance causing premature wear of the die itself as well as tooling pins and bushings. Another important part of the proper infrastructure that enables optimal oak machine performance is the use of clean, dry, compressed air. Using moist, unclean air in oak machines will cause excessive moisture to collect in the air lines. This will cause the air lines to corrode and the valves to stick, hindering equipment performance. In a fin die, Compressed air is used to discharge the metal scraps from the completed fins. Introducing water into these airlines will cause rust corrosion problems that will become the source of many future issues with the die and fin line. Using clean, dry, and compressed air will mean clean and dry machine components. Temperature and humidity fluctuations is also an important issue surrounding optimal equipment operation. Drastic changes in climate conditions in a facility can adversely affect your equipment. An environment in which the atmosphere is cool in the morning and later becomes hot and humid can cause condensation to form on the surface of and inside the equipment. If equipment condensation is not prevented, not only will corrosion issues develop, but electrical issues can also arise. Too much condensation on a fin stack can cause the stack or electrical system to short circuit and then the fin line will not run. A facility that is protected from weather and atmosphere changes is best prepared to keep its machines from developing condensation related issues that will impact productivity. A plant with proper foundation and clean dry manufacturing environment promotes peak performance and longevity for most machines. The extra cost of constructing a high quality facility is essential to protecting capital equipment investments and is a necessary part of producing high quality products. The preventative maintenance is crucial in achieving optimal performance from oak machines. A manufacturer, a manufacturer's purchase of capital equipment is a substantial investment and choosing oak machinery reflects that company's commitment to producing high quality HVAC components. Caring for these investments and thus prolonging company's ability to continue producing high quality components requires upkeep of equipment at regular intervals. Adhering to oak's preventative maintenance suggestions ensures continued superior performance and a longer machine life. Oak machine manuals contain suggested maintenance intervals, which include tasks such as simple inspections, lubricating bearings, checking belt tensions, and changing fluids. Failure to perform these tasks will result in a shorter equipment life expectancy. While equipment may still run for an extended period of time with overused wear items, the machine will be under added stress and will accelerate wear on other parts of the machine. Additionally, ignoring preventative maintenance may wear out tooling more quickly, causing a decline in product quality. The fin die is a good example of a tool with life expectancy that is especially responsive to preventative maintenance. There are simple inspections and housekeeping tasks that, bear, that take very little time and will help avoid serious future problems when performing regularly. As an example, consider how the ball cage is in a fin die where grooves on the guide pins are inside the bushings. This is because the ball cages are tracking up and down in the same position daily, 220 to 280 strokes a minute. If neglected for too long, further issues may result from these grooves. The ball cages are attached to guide pins with a bolt and washer and over time gravity and inertia will cause a ball cage to work its way to the lower position and eventually the washer assembly will bottom out inside the cage and that will do this on this upstroke of the press. This creates an action similar to that of a slide hammer in which the ball cage is being repositioned 
via a repeated skidding motion at 220 to 280 strokes a minute. A natural consequence of this is for the bushing to break loose from the lower die chute because the ball cage is skidding rather than rolling at high stroke speeds, further exaggerating the current grooves inside of the bushing. To prolong this situation from happening, a very simple five minute task can be performed each day. With the die at the top of the stroke, raise the crown of the press all the way up. At this point, the ball cages will be out of preload and not bound between the pins and bushings. Next, give each of the ball cages a slight turn or spin. This will reposition them so they're not tracking in the same spot every day. This is a very minimal time investment to prevent the expensive potential problem of a bushing detachment. And keep in mind that the pins and bushings of a die is like its heartbeat. That is what keeps everything aligned. You lose alignment on those, all the rest of your tooling will probably end up being sheared. While the die is raised, it should be inspected for shrapnel that has been left in the, behind from pierced slugs, edge trim slugs, aluminum fines, slivers near the enhancements and slit stations. The die should be inspected for this debris each day and depending on the amount that collects in the die should also be cleaned out one or two times a week. When removing the shrapnel from the die, it is tempting to use compressed air because that is readily available. But this is not advised because it can be too difficult to control where the shrapnel might end up. It could be blown into other parts of the die or line, leading to a whole new set of problems. A good method for removing the shrapnel is use an industrial style vacuum with a hose attachment. Sometimes it can be helpful to make your own rendition of an attachment that would more easily reach the desired areas of the die. You can also use a pick of some sort. Uh, a lot of people use a dental pick to actually help get up inside the flare bushings, the draw bushings, and your upper draw plate if you have any broken collars that have managed to make their way up inside and clean those out. Broken springs. Everybody's dealt with broken springs in their fin dies. So what, what do most people do when they have a broken spring in their fin die? They want to change just that one spring. It's a good idea to change them all. If one three-quarter inch by two inch red spring broke, change all of the three-quarter by two inch red springs. Don't just change that one out because the others will soon follow. And broken springs, as you can see, can cause damages to plates. They have this unique ability, for some reason, all the bits and pieces of a broken spring to align themselves to become solid it will actually drive the pin back down in the lower plate. The cost of the time required to perform these preventative maintenance tasks is really quite small compared to the cost of repairing damage caused by equipment neglect. Equipment malfunction can be extremely expensive if a machine fails and production must be stopped for several days while the problem is diagnosed, parts are ordered, and the problem is repaired. To inspect and clean out your die, as previously discussed, you can expect to spend approximately two hours each week. And if the maintenance is scheduled to be performed while the main machine is not running, maybe during a shift change or another off production time, then the only cost really involved is the labor to perform the maintenance. Two hours per week is pretty minor expense to protect your investment and prevent delays in your production schedule. The best practice for achieving the highest quality product and longest equipment life from your Oak machine is to follow the suggested maintenance procedures found in the Oak machine manual. The perishable tooling. Another essential part of Oak machine maintenance involves the upkeep or replacement of perishable tooling. 
While preventative maintenance is performed on a regular schedule, maintenance of perishable tooling is often only performed once equipment performance has become impaired. The need for tooling maintenance on your fin die may reveal itself as burrs on the cut edges of the fins. The fins will appear to have been torn rather than cut. Additionally, the burrs that are peeled off from the fins will accumulate, causing the die to fill up with debris. Moreover, rough and jagged pierced scraps, commonly known as slugs, tend to hang up in pierce holes, causing an increase in tonnage and the potential to break tooling if the issue is not addressed quickly. While oak dies are designed to make it nearly impossible for slugs to get caught in the slug holes, those with large burrs may get caught in the sides of the hole, accumulating inside the pierced die, potentially causing both the pierced die nose and the pierced punch nose to break. The broken die tooling may then be carried into an enhancement station, causing costly damage to tooling there as well. If the broken tooling passes through and breaks part of an enhancement plate stripper, that replacement cost could reach up to $24,000. This is a very expensive, unfortunate consequence of running a machine with dull tooling. Further examples of some of the problems associated with dull fin tooling include dull pier stations that may cause split collars, particularly if they continue to occur over the same locations. If maintenance of the fin die tooling is neglected for too long, you will need increased tonnage to close the die. Furthermore, restoring a worn-out die will demand more in-depth refurbishment, which will be necessary to find additional material from the die into shorter tooling life. Cut-off blades are often neglected. While this type of tooling does not cut in every stroke and should not dull as quickly as fin die tooling, it is still important to maintain sharp cut-off blades. Failure to replace dull cut-off blades can result in the fins being pinched apart rather than cut. This will cause poor cut quality, further wear in components, and com problems with stacking fins <clears throat> since they are abruptly breaking apart and are less likely to drop straight onto the stacker rods. The slide that you're looking at currently actually shows some of the things that uh, we have seen. Uh, tooling that comes into burrow oak tool to have sharpened. This is just an example of some tooling that would come in to see it to our facility. It, you need to take great care in how you treat the dull tooling before you send it to us. Taking them out of the die and tossing them into a box and shipping it here, you toss them into the box, you're going to put dings on the cutting edges. Shipping it here, those are all loose. They will bounce off of each other. They will also make nicks and dings. We've seen slip blades come in that actually had more damage on them from throwing them in a box and shipping it to us than they had when they came out of the die. We had to grind a lot more off of those pieces of tooling, which obviously shortened the actual overall useful life of that tool. So take great care in protecting the tooling, just like we do when we send you new new tooling, wrap it up as best you can the same way, protecting those cut edges when you send it to us. It'll save you money over the long haul. So to achieve optimal performance and product quality from your oak machines, it is important to first create an environment ideal for coil production by constructing a strong, stable foundation using uncontaminated air in the machines and curbing temperature and humidity fluctuation inside your facility. Following a good environment, another significant factor in optimizing production is to establish a consistent preventative maintenance schedule for machines. Oak machine manuals contain important suggested maintenance procedures that should be adopted in your facility. Additionally, Oak service personnel are able to provide valuable training on machine and maintenance. Lastly, another central role in the optimization of oak machine performance is played by the upkeep of perishable tooling. The need to sharpen or replace perishable tooling can be detected using a variety of methods. Oak service and oak's replacement parts departments can offer useful assistance with scheduling service and ordering replacement tools. Okay, 
Thanks, Larry. So now we'll, we'll continue into our, our Q&A session of the presentation. Um, as right now, we don't have specific questions. Maybe we can take a quick two or three minute break as you all get a chance to think through some of the questions you have for Larry while we have him, um, specific to tooling, to production facility, whatever it may be. So again, I'll reference you to the, the questions section of our webinar. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, go ahead and submit those. Okay, as of right now, we still don't have any specific questions. Not a big deal if, if I know each of you are pressed for time. If you would like to go ahead and submit it to your questions to marketing at baroque.com, Baroque we can uh, follow up with those. All right, looks like we do have a question now, Larry. Um, it looks like someone's, someone wants to know the best way <clears throat> for dye changing with minimum time. Okay. Um, I guess that depends what kind of fin line options you have. Uh, <clears throat> the best way is if you could actually have all of your uh, everything staged, all your tools staged by the fin line so you aren't searching for those. Um, I'm going to assume that it's using a die takeout system that Burroughs provided. Um, basically having everything readily available, I think uh, if you're actually to measure the amount of time it takes to change a die over, a lot of times people spend more time looking for the tools, looking for the rod holders if they have to change the rod holders on the stack or two. They spend more time looking for those things than they actually do removing the die out of the press. As far as a quick die change type system, we are actually looking at something that uh, will help us with that. Um, there is no real, real quick way to change a die out. Um, you have to go through all the steps, the same steps you always do. You got to inch at the bottom, take the bolts out of the top half of your die, loosen them up, you know, inch inch at the top, put bring it back down, put your straps on. All those steps have to be followed. You really can't skip over any of those without without the uh, probability of damaging something. So uh, I don't know if that really answered your question or not. Uh, I do know that a lot of our companies are looking for a quick die change option, and we are actually investigating that, how we can do that. So those would actually probably clamp in hydraulically. Um, as far as right now, mechanically, there are no short, short steps to it. They all have to be followed. Okay, next one for you, Larry. Um, it's another question regarding sharpening. The question specifically asks, what, how, how many strokes of a cutoff blade can you get or expect to get before you need to sharpen? That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure there is an exact answer to that because it all depends on the material that you're running. Um, you know, uh, do you run 10,000 stainless or do you run 10,000 aluminum? They're all different. Um, the only thing I can say is that a properly maintained die, and you can use this as somewhat of a guideline. Uh, I don't have the number of strokes, but I can by the number of days. Oh, H22, H24. Okay. I've seen where fin dies actually, the stations inside the die, the pierce, the enhancement, they've lasted upwards of six to six months to a year without sharpening. Now those hit every stroke. So I would say a, cut, a set of cutoff blades, you'll probably go a couple years between sharpening those because they don't hit every stroke. They only hit every so many strokes. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Again, obviously, as we as we <clears throat> email us at marketing at baroque dot com, and we'll uh, we'll be happy to answer those questions. We'll wait here for just a little bit more, and then we can give you some time back in your day.
Okay, looks like we do have another question for you, Larry. The question is specific to whether Burrow Tool is going to introduce smaller and more economical machines. Maybe you could speak briefly to what some of our upcoming goals are for our machines. Yes, we are looking at uh, some smaller and economical machines. Uh, we we do have a uh, fin press. It's called the FP400. That is actually designed around basically a company that wants to get started in making coils. Obviously, they don't want to spend a ton of money on the high production end equipment. They want a uh, smaller and a little bit cheaper fin line. Um, so we do have our FP400. Um, as far as like our uh, smaller Physically smaller and uh, faster equipment, we do have the new Triumph Bender that uh, hopefully most of you have uh, read about or heard about. Uh, that is, uh, took, took the place of our old hydraulic hairpin bender. Um, it actually can produce uh, up to 70% more hairpins an hour than the old machine. It takes up a smaller footprint on the floor. Um, it's quieter because it is electric. and uh, it costs about the same money. Great, thanks Larry. All right, another question is, what, what's your recommendation for auditing to ensure preventative maintenance is being completed, uh, specifically targeting lubrication? How do, you, how do you effectively measure or propose it's effectively measured? Well, the way we do it here with the equipment we have for producing these machines, uh, like on our machining centers, <clears throat> we actually have check sheets at every machining center. And the maintenance, the maintenance crew actually has, has to sign off that they've actually checked those particular functions. Uh, that's the best, thing, best way I know. There's really no good way of doing it other than relying on the human factor but uh, check sheets, that's the, that's the best way I know to do it. Okay, another looks like a potential follow-up as well. Um, can oak electrostatic lube station be bought separately and assembled in older presses? Yes, it can. We do have a uh, retrofit electrostatic lubrication system. Uh, we've retrofitted it in uh, FP2s, P3s. Um, it basically what it does is it uh, drops right into your current loop tank. And of course it comes with all the controls and things necessary to integrate it into that fin line. And another question along the same lines there for you. It's uh, in regards to a machine that currently uses 7 millimeter hole punch, they'd like to move to 5 millimeter. Um, is it recommended a new die in on, on their old current old machine? It's about 14 year old machine. We would recommend a new die, and part of the reason is if we if we were to retrofit an old die with a uh, new hole size tooling, what you'll end up with is a non-standard tooling size. In other words, the nose diameters of your pierce tooling and all your other tooling that's in that die compared to the size of the body to fit in the holes would not be our standards which would actually end up costing you more initially it would actually cost you more later when you need to buy replacement tooling so I'd rather we'd rather see you purchase a new die it'll actually just run cleaner um, it'll have besides that a 14 year old die won't have some of the later features that we put in our new dies that actually help maintain a better production of your fins. Okay, and then also it's it's totally fine using a new die on an old machine. That was another follow-up question for sure. Okay, so great questions coming in everyone. Um, another question is regarding, would upgrading punch tooling from A2 to A11 with coating add significant service life and offer positive ROI?
Now that that one I would have to actually uh, consult our engineering group to get the data that would support the answer to that, and we I could uh, actually email that to you. Great. Another question specific to what the best way is to prevent high voltage alarms with the ESL, as well as whether or what the best way is to prevent oil migration in the ESL box. That question as well I'm going to have to refer to our engineering group on. Uh, that's a controls question. Um, I'm more of a mechanical guy so I'll get the answer for you on that and send that back to you by email. Okay. And it looks like a lot of these follow-up questions are specific to particular products that are that are sitting in each of your factories, and we're more than happy to follow up in those regards. We, we will get to those. Any other general questions that would be helpful for the industry as a whole uh, before we let Larry go? All righty, everyone, thank you so much for your time. Um, again, as questions come up, keep sending it either to the, the session we're in. We'll keep it open for a little bit longer. Otherwise, go ahead and email those to us at marketingemperor.com. Thank you for your time. Larry, again, thanks for, for spending this time with us. Hopefully, it's been very helpful. Feel free to send feedback to us in regards to how we can make this webinar series better. Um, we're open to input in that regard. Thanks, everyone. Hope all is going well, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again in our next webinar. Thanks.